So this question is basically a typical transformer uh, question with testing. So here we have a 50 kVA, 600 by 2400 volt. This is the voltage ratio, 60 hertz. Single phase transformers has an open and short circuit test data as follows. Okay, uh, then this is your open circuit test and this is your short circuit test. Now, the open circuit test, we always apply the rated voltage. Okay, rated voltage. What does this mean? It means that I will apply the maximum voltage to one side and leave the other side as an open circuit. Here, it's very clear that this I apply 600 volt. Okay, and the transformer is basically uh, 2,600 uh, by 2,400. So I am applying the values from the primary side of the transformer because this is a step up transformer. So actually I am, this, the open circuit is referred to the primary. Now, the short circuit on the other hand, now by default, if one side give it from the primary, the other one would be given from the secondary. But just to confirm, you'll see that the current, 15 amp, this is close to the rated current. Now, this is a 15 kVA transformer. If you divide 15 kVA by 2,400, you will find that this is the uh, somehow the, the current in the, in the transformer. This is the rated current in the secondary of the transformer. So the, this referred to the primary, and this is referred to the to the secondary. Now, in the exam, I will explicitly tell you which one is referred to what. But in case if you see a question does not explicitly tell you that, you can figure out very easily from the question. You see, find the approximate equivalent circuit referred to the primary side. So it means that the open circuit test, the values, I will use them as they are. The secondary value, I will actually, I need to do this uh, change or referring them to the other side. So we need to find this. Now, if the transformer here is working at certain condition, 90% of the load, a certain power factor, I need to do calculate certain, certain parameters. Okay, so now let's start with the finding the approximate equivalent circuit. Okay, so we'll use the same formulas that we have in the, uh, in the notes. Okay, so we start with finding your value of Y, which is your I open circuit over V open circuit, which is equal to uh, 3.34, the current divided by the 600, the voltage, which is equal to 0 0.005567. This is uh, Siemens. And from this also, we can find the angle we know that cosine theta equal to P open circuit divided by V open circuit, I open circuit. So from this, you can find that your cosine theta open circuit, let me call it this way, is equal to the open circuit power 484 divided by the V open circuit, the 600 uh, times the 3.34, and this will give me point Two four one, and from this you will find your theta open circuit, which is cosine inverse of point two forty one, and this will give me seventy six point zero two degrees. So this is your angle. So from this you can say that your y is equal to the magnitude point zero zero five five sixty seven angle of minus seventy six point zero two because this is an admittance the opposite of the of the impedance okay so from this let me rewrite this your y is equal to point zero zero five five seven angle of minus seventy six point zero two which is equal to point zero zero Five. Let me see what what exact number we I have. Let me use the same number like this. Five five sixty seven. I mean, if you approximate, that should be fine, okay? But this is just to match my answers. Cosine minus seventy six point zero two plus j point zero zero five five sixty seven sine of minus seventy six point zero two. 
and from this you will find this is equal to 0 0.001345 minus j point zero zero five four zero three which is equal to one over r c minus one j over x m so from this you can find your rc which is equal to the opposite of this which is equal to 743.5 ohms and your xm will equal to 185.1 ohm so you, the open circuit test will give you the shunt parameters in the transformer. Okay, so here, if this is my transformer, these are the shunt parameters that I calculated them. This is your RC and this is your XM. Now, the short circuit test, on the other hand, will give me the series components, the R equivalent and the X equivalent. Okay, so here you have again the voltage, the current, and the power. So we can find the magnitude of the short circuit, which is 76.4 divided by 15, which is equal to 5.0933 ohm. And your theta short circuit equal to P short circuit, of course, cosine inverse of that divided by V short circuit, I short circuit. So from this, your theta short circuit equal to cosine inverse of 392 divided by 76.4 times uh, 15. And this will give me 69.997 or 70 degree. Okay, so your R equivalent would equal to your Z 5.0933 cosine of 70, and this will give me 1.742 ohms, and your X equivalent will equal to 5.0933 sine 70, and this will give me 4.786 ohms. Now, these values are referred to what? Referred to the secondary, as we have seen. So this is referred to the secondary. But I want to refer them to the primary. Why? Because the question is asking me to refer everything into the primary. So then I need to multiply them with the A square. Okay. What is A in this transformer? It is a step up transformer, 600 by 2400, which is 1 over 4. So now your R equivalent prime is equal to 1.742 times 1 over 4 square and this will give me 0 0.1088 ohm and x equivalent dash is equal to the 4.787 times 1 over 4 square and this will give me a value equal to 0 0.3 ohm now i found everything i want about my uh, transformer i found the shunt parameters and i found the series parameters and all of them are referred to the to the primary side of my transformer so i'm done with the first part of the question part a to find the approximate circuit now we need to find certain calculations using the model. Now, sometimes I will give you the model or you will have the model ready. So you start from the part B, but in this question, you need to uh, first find the model and then you start the, the calculations. Okay. Now here, let me uh, draw the model that you have. So we have here R equivalent prime, X equivalent prime, and we have here your RC your x m now this is referred to the primary so this becomes equal to a v2 and here this is i2 over a and here is your i1 and your v 
G1, okay? Now we know that the turn ratio A is equal to one over four. So it means that your AV2 will equal to one over four times the secondary voltage, which is 2,400. So this will give me 600 volt. So this is your AV2. So the voltage here is equal to 600 volt angle of, angle of zero. Okay, now let's see here about the current, how to find the current. Now let's go back and read the question carefully. If the transformer is used as a step up transformer, supplying 90% of the load. Now the maximum load I can have is the 50 kVA, but I will not be supplying the rated load. I will be supplying only 0.9 of the rated load. And we have here uh, the the power the power factor. Okay, so now I need to find the the current that we will uh, deal with. Now, the current I two over A, I will call it I two dash. So I two dash will equal to the 0.9 as a magnitude times the 50 kVA divided by the voltage at the secondary circuit refer to the primary, which is the 600. And this will give me 75 amps. And from this, your I2 dash will equal to 75 angle of minus cosine inverse of the power factor, which is 0.8. And this will give me 75 angle of minus 36.8. Six. So now I am done with I2. I know everything. I can find V1. V1 is the input voltage. So my from this, my V1, just simple KVL, is equal to my I2 dash times R equivalent dash plus JX equivalent dash. This is all referred to the primary side plus your AV2. So from this, your V1 will equal to 75 minus angle of minus 36.87. This is times R, your R equivalent, which is 0.1088 plus J.3 plus 600 angle of zero. And this will give me 620 angle of 1.21 volt. So that is my V1. Then we want to find the voltage regulation. Okay, the voltage regulation as we know it, V no load minus V full load divided by V full load. And this is times 100 to make it percentage. We know that the voltage regulation is actually done always at the secondary side. Where, why at the secondary side? Because this is the side where I connect the load. This is the side where I really care about the voltage regulation because I want to maintain the voltage as constant as possible at the load. This is the most important thing. Now, at no load condition, if you look to the circuit here, at no load condition, this voltage will be actually V1 because we are energizing the transformer from this side and at that condition this is your V a V2 so at no load we will use V1 as the value so this equal to V1 minus a V2 divided by a V2 times 100 which is equal to 620 minus 600 divided by 600 equal to 3.33 3 percent the last part what is the efficiency we know that the efficiency is p out over pn which is equal to p out divided by p out plus losses now we have here a couple of ways we can do that i will tell you that what is the easiest and acceptable way Although there will be some disc little bit of discrepancies between the different methods that you might use but all of them are acceptable. I will show you the easiest one. P out, we know it. Now here, we want to find the efficiency at the conditions given in the question, which is the 90%. So your P out is 0.9 times the S, which is the 50 times 10 to power 3 times the power 
factor to convert S into P divided by, this is, will be your P out, the 0.9 times 50 times 10 to power 3 times 0.8. Now, I want to add the losses, the easiest and the best way, and this is how it's done, by the way, in the industry. We use the losses from, from the no load test and from the short circuit test, because this is your uh, core loss, and this is your cover loss. So we just simply come here and substitute for 84 plus 392, and this will give me 97.6%. Now, if you want to go and find I, I2 over A squared times R equivalent as your cover loss, and then you need to find this uh, current, and then you need to find this current. Basically, you divide V1 divided by RC, you get this current. You or you, you mentioned V1 squared divided by RC to find the core loss. That's also acceptable, but there's a lot of calculations there. And as I said, there will be a little bit of discrepancies, but both answers are 100% correct. 